Why? The Great Tribulation, or the end of 6,000 years of man's depravity, led by the anti-Moshiach and the Navi Sheker, symbolized by the number 666, man's ultimate falling short of Yahweh's glory, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh. And so, so the, 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 uh, the, all, all, all the, the sixth day ends when Yeshua touches down the Mount of Olives, and the seventh day what? Begins. Begins. What seventh day? The seventh 1,000 year period from Gan Eden. Amen. The Garden of Eden. At evening, there'll be light. Why? Because Yeshua said in Yohanan 8, 12, I am the light of the world. If any man, if any man walk in me, he has the light of the world. Yeshua said, I am the light of the world. So he comes at the evening of the sixth day, or the end of 6,000 years of man, or the end of the what? Great Flipsis, the great what? Yaakov's trouble, Jeremiah 37. He comes at the end of Yaakov's trouble to start the dawn of a new day, and the dawn will start at night, at the night of the 6,000th year from Adam, and the dawn of the Atid Lavo, when Yeshua will be the light, and the Lamb will be the light thereof, somebody. Come on. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Now look at verse 8. In that day, in that day, when? In that day. When the cities behold Elohim, when Yeshua comes again, the second parousia of Moshiach. Moshiach is only coming twice. He's not coming three times. The idea that he comes for his bride and in with his bride is a total fabrication of the false Babylonian horror system. That's right, that's He says he's coming again, not two times. I'm coming again. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. People say, well, no, that's not true because in the rapture, he doesn't come to earth. He just descends from heaven and, and catches up the saints. Excuse me, sweetheart. If he leaves his throne, he's descended. If he's descended, that's a coming. Where I don't care where he lands. If he gets out of his throne and descends, you've got a coming. One plus one equals three. Plus one equals three. One plus one plus one equals three. I'm going to get this straight. I better get this straight. Hallelujah. Yeshua's coming again. For sure. And in that day, it shall be, look at verse 8, that living waters will flow from Yerushalayim. What's flowing from Yerushalayim to nowadays? Dead, death, disease, confusion, hatred, variance, strife, Emotional, spiritual, and physical illness. Don't tell me the people on the, on the Palestinian occupied West Bank are emotionally well. Please don't tell me that. When a 15 year old girl wraps herself in explosives and says, Allah u akbar, God is great. Yeah, he's a great killer. That, late, that, that child is not emotionally well. Something is emotionally unstable. Mm -hmm. It's a culture. Mm -hmm. It's a culture of death led by a Messiah of death. Yep. Yasser Arafat is a Messiah yep, of right. death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We love the Palestinian people. All you have to do is remove the leadership of the Palestinian people right. and right. you will have peace. That's right. The Palestinian people are not the enemy of Israel. It is the leadership of the Palestinian yes, people that are the enemies of Israel. Yep. But in that day, what day? The day when it lights up the, the, the night sky. Huh. There's going to be one day when it will be evening, but it won't be dark. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that day. What day? That day. When it will be evening, but it won't be dark. Hallelujah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Because Moshiach is going to return to Har Haz 18. Acts chapter 1. Tommy Dean, why do you gaze at heaven like you're, like you're in a cloud? Ha! Yeshua is the one in the cloud. And the same Yeshua who goes up shall come back in like manner. Amen. What does it mean? He went up from Olivet. He's coming back to Olivet. He's not coming to New York. He's not coming to Hong Kong. He's not coming to Beirut. He's not coming to Amman, Jordan. The same way and the same location and the same manner as he went up is the way he's coming back. Hallelujah. To the Mount of Olives. And in that day, what day? In that day, 
Yeah, T-Lavo, the coming after the great tribulation of the son of Adam, Ben Adam. There'll be living waters flowing from Yerushalayim. Half toward the eastern sea. Half toward the eastern sea and half toward the western sea. What's the western sea? The Mediterranean. What's the eastern sea? Could be or the Red Sea or could also be the Jordan River. Amen. Isn't Jerusalem on the, on the Palestinian occupied West Bank? So I believe the healing comes to the Jordan River. Isn't the Jordan River the basis of the current conflict? It divides what? Mm -hmm. East and West Bank? Oh, yes. So Yah when the Yeshua returns, he'll send the healing waters toward the Jordan River and toward the Mediterranean, meaning the Jordan River will no longer divide West Bank and East Bank, but Israel and the Tabernacle of David geographically will be restored. Amen. Yahweh will take the East Bank, bring healing to the Jordan, so the Jordan no longer do. That was known as transfer. So the Jordan no longer divides, rather it's healing. And, and Yahweh uses the healing of the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea to secure Israel's boundaries. The same boundaries he gave to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. That which is the cause of death, fighting, and turmoil, he turns into the river of healing. Yeah. Because the king will be in Yerushalayim, Matthew 25. Ma Yerushalayim is the city of the great king. Yes. Yes. And from him flows healing. Right. Healing for all Israel as he heals the Jordan right. and heals the Mediterranean. And Israel is reestablished according to the boundaries he gave to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Turn your neighbor and say the boundaries. The boundaries. The boundaries. The boundaries. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Half toward the eastern sea, half toward the western sea, in summer as well as in winter. Amen. Did you know, brothers and sisters, did you know there are only two seasons according to scripture? Summer and winter? Huh? Hmm? Fall and spring are added by man. But according to the Bible, there are two seasons. You with me? Okay. Summer and winter. Not four seasons, two seasons. Mm -hmm. well, what does Yahweh take in these two seasons? He brings the two... Uh, he's bringing time in, in one. He takes the two seasons, makes them one season, takes the, the two points of contention, the Jordan and the Mediterranean, or even the Red Sea, and heals that because the king is, is there. He's no longer coming. He resides and is seated in Yerushalayim yeah. on his throne, on the throne of his father David. Oh, yeah. Yeshua is the solution. Yeah. And he says, don't worry, don't be afraid. I, Yeshayahu 48. Behold, your Elohim comes. His reward is with him. Say to the cities of Yehuda, behold, your Elohim comes. Yes, Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Look at verse 9. When you show people that, you know, they're, they're all caught up in this, in this sacred name controversy. You ever get caught up in a sacred name argument? <laughs> well, how come I can't call him by my name? name my like name is every name of him. Every, he understands my heart. Yeah, he does understand your heart, but he may not understand your lips. He says in Shmuel 23, 13, he says, let the name of other mighty ones not even come out of your mouth. Mm-hmm. Don't even let it come out of your mouth. So he may know your heart, but he's, now he's questioning your lips. <laughs> and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yeah. Yahweh is going to settle the controversy of how to pronounce his true name. Amen. In the day when evening becomes light. <laughs> in the day when healing flows from the city of the great king to both the Jordan and the Mediterranean and Israel is restored back to the land of our forefathers David and Shlomo yes. in that day when when then Yahweh shall be king over all the earth 
He's not sending a pope. He's not sending a mufti. He's not sending a rabbi. He's not sending a politician from Likud or labor. He himself is coming in the flesh again, and he will rule and reign from Yerushalayim as Melech HaMlachim, Adon Adonim. Somebody give him praise. Yeah. In that day, you'll know his name. In that day, the rulers of the Atid Lavo will know his name. In that day, the subjected ones, the sons of Edom, the defeated Palestinian foes and enemies of Yahweh, and all those who refuse to submit to the mastership of his son Yeshua, even they will know his name. We say in Hebrew, Bayom Hahu, Bayom Hahu, Yahweh Ushemo, Ushemo, Ushemo in that day, his name will be one. The controversy will be over. Look at verse 9. Yahweh will be the king in that day. He's already the king of heaven and earth, but he's coming to earth again to show that he himself owns the earth and not those who have, who have taken the title deed of this planet through their king, S period, A period, 10. Mm -hmm. You with me? S period, A period, 10 is an illegal occupant, just like the Palestinians are illegal occupants of Yahweh's land. You with me? But in that day, guess what? He'll be king. He'll be visibly king. And say to the cities of Judah, behold, your king's coming. Relax. You're not going to have to walk by faith anymore. You're going to be able to walk by sight. Amen. Your king is coming. He that came the first time will come again. Say to those cities, those controversial cities, those cities on the Palestinian-occupied West Bank, they're going to revert to Israeli control. And not the Israeli control of Ariel Sharon, the Israeli control of Yeshua ben Yahweh. Not Yahweh ben Yahweh, Yeshua ben Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Now jump down to verse 13. Hallelujah. Jump down to verse 13. Hallelujah. No, no, I'm going to just keep going. Look at verse 10. All the land will be changed into a desert plain. From Geba. Why is Yahweh going to change the mountains into a, into a plain? Into a, like, like a desert. Why is he going to change the topography of the land? Why? So they can all get a good glimpse of the king. Hallelujah. <laughs> Every valley shall, yes. shall be exalted. Amen. Every high place Amen. shall be brought low. <laughs> the crooked places made straight. A highway will be prepared for our Elohim. Ooh. And all flesh will see oh, the glory of Yahweh, Yahweh together. Yahweh. And Yahweh's going to say, I don't want these mountains to block the king. This is the view of the king. I don't want these mountains to block the healing virtue that flows from his wings, oh, his kinafim. I want everyone, righteous and unrighteous, rulers and subjected, yes. to see the rulership of my son Yeshua. Amen. And I'm going to take all the mountains and I'm going to make it as if I, it was a plane. Ooh, so everything Yahweh. could be in plain view. No mistakes. Hallelujah. How many know Yahweh knows how to do a construction job? Yes, 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 yes. How many know Yahweh's into construction? Yes. He's going to reconstruct things <laughs> when he returns. Yeah, Yeshua returns, there's going to be a whole bunch of reconstruction going on. Turn to your neighbor and say, reconstruction. He doesn't need a permit. I'll be your neighbor. Reconstruction. <laughs> Karen, you need a neighbor this morning. Yeah, not have too many neighbors there. <laughs> I know. I'll be your neighbor. Look at verse 10. All the land shall be changed into a desert plain from Geba to Rimon, Hallelujah. south of Yerushalayim. She shall be raised up and inhabited again in her place. From Benjamin's gate to the place of the gate, to the corner gate, from the tower of Hananel to the wine press of the sovereign. Verse 11. They shall dwell in her. There will be no more destruction. By the children of destruction. Yes, by you. the children of darkness. No more. Because the king is bringing healing to the city. And he's not only to the city, but to all the gates of the city. To all the towers of the city. Yeah. To the residents of the city. Right. And there will be no more destruction because look at the end of verse 11. Yerushalayim will be safely inhabited. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. It's not safe now to take a tour to Israel. No. It's not safe to visit. No. 
It's too dangerous. But when Yahshua comes, guess what? It's going to be safe. Not only is it going to be safe to tour, it's going to be safe to live. And you might as well get ready because we're going to be living forever in Yerushalayim. That is our permanent home. You with me? That's where we're going to live. That is our permanent home. Get ready, get ready, get ready. And we are going to have to prepare ourselves because Yeshua is going to do a whole bunch of construction and land, re what do they call that? Landscaping. <laughs> because it's going to be only be healing and only be day and only be light. You with me? So when we go to Israel, we don't have to visit anymore. We're going to be live there. Why? It's going to be safe. Yeshua is coming not only to end the Edomite-Israeli conflict, but to make things safe again. O oh, cities, behold your Elohim. No more destruction. Now look at verse 12. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. This is the plague with which Yahweh will plague all the people. How many? All, all the, nations. the nations. How many nations are going to come against Jerusalem telling, oh, telling oh. little tiny Israel to give Jerusalem back to the Palestinians who were never there to begin with? I have news for you. I have news for you. I can prove to you in two seconds that the Palestinians never lived in the West Bank. Yeah. You ready? Two seconds. The PLO was formed in 1964. Okay? Jerusalem was not captured from Jordan until 1967. Right. They say if Israel would pull out of the Israeli occupied West Bank, we'd have peace. If they'd give back the land to the Palestinians, because they're us their land, then we'd have peace. Well let me ask you a question. In 1967, Jerusalem and the and the occupied West Bank didn't belong to Israel, it belonged to Jordan. Yeah. And the Palestinians fought the Jordanian government to try to take control of the West Bank. If it was theirs, why did they have to fight for it? That's right. Plus, why was the PLO formed? If the West Bank belonged to Jordan, and the PLO was formed three years before Israel won the West Bank in a legitimate military conflict, that means they weren't formed to take back the West Bank. They were formed to take Tel Aviv and Haifa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the cities of Judah to push the Jews into the sea. You with me? Yeah. There was no West Bank to take back. Because the West Bank belonged to King Hussein. Yeah. You with me? So why was the PLO formed three years before the West Bank became Israeli property? You know why? Because they had a peace plan. It's the same peace plan that's in effect today. Mm -hmm. What is the peace plan? P-I-E-C-E. -E. Yeah. I'll spell that again. P-I-E-C-E. -E. They want a peace. <laughs> They want to take Israel apart piece yeah. by piece, yeah. push the Jews. They can't go east because there's Jordan. They don't want Jews there. Can't go west because there's the Mediterranean Sea. Can't go north because there's Lebanon and Syria. Can't go south because we gave the land back to Egypt. You getting, you getting, you're starting to get a picture of the peace plan? Yeah. Got nowhere to go. You got nowhere to go. Oh, there is a way in the ocean. Oh, there. So in other words, let's shove all the Jews into the Mediterranean. Yeah. Right. And when six million, ironically, the number is six million Israeli citizens. When the six million goes in, underneath the water of the Mediterranean, and the last bubble floats to the top, the peace process will be over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You with me? Yeah. Arafat said we're fighting the battle of Saladin. The, the systematic dismantling of the state of Israel. We cannot defeat Israel on the battlefield, but we can through the polit pop, through the media and through the and through political maneuvering, we can dissect it into little bits and little pieces. And that's what they're doing. Let's get back to the word. Look at verse 12. This is a plague which Yahweh is coming with. So Yahweh is coming for shalom for his people, his born again when you're coming in Israelites. But he's coming and it'll be safe for us, but unsafe for them. Now it's unsafe for us and safe for them. But when he comes, it's going to be safe for us and unsafe for them. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, safe for us. Safe safe for us. us. Try that again. Safe for us. Safe for us. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. This is the plague. Yahweh is coming with a plague to destroy all the nations who put their nose where it knocked. 
They were to lift up the cup, the cup of power, self-importance, trying to settle the Jerusalem question. Yeah, what does Yahweh do to those who try to pick up this cup of reeling designed to make them stumble and drunk with their own self-importance? Everyone wants a piece of Jerusalem, the European Union. The Arabs, everybody wants a piece of Jerusalem to tell Israel how to settle the Israeli, the, the city of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. Yahweh takes that cup of reeling and turns it into a what? A stone of trembling. Yeah. An ebed kasher. Yeah. A heavy stone. What's going to happen to all those who get involved with Jerusalem when Yahweh says, hands off? Yes. They're going to develop spiritual hernias. And Yahweh will destroy them and crush them. What's the best thing the world can do with the city of Yerushalayim? What's the best thing the nations of the world, the European Union, the Arab League, the U.S. of A. What's the best thing they can do? Don't, just go on vacation. Yeah. Don't touch it. Go on vacation. Just don't touch it. Yahweh says, you don't want to touch. Try to impose a political solution on my city. That's not just any city. That's the city of my son, where he's going to rule and reign in this world. Leave it alone. Watch out. The world says, no, but I've got an idea. Yahweh says, leave it alone. The world says, yeah, but I've got some ideas, some progress. We can make progress on the, on the, on the Israeli-Palestinian dispute. Yahweh says, go on vacation. Take a break. Leave it alone. Because you're going to be destroyed physically and spiritually mm -hmm. if you mess with that which you ought not to mess with. It's kind of like the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in Gone Eden. Mm -hmm. Don't mess with that tree. You can eat from any tree in the field. Why mess with that one? Yep. And what does the world say? We don't want any city. We want Jerusalem. The Catholic Church wants Jerusalem because Nostradamus and a whole bunch of those other false prophets uh -huh. said that in the latter days they're going to move from Rome that the Catholic headquarters is going to move from Rome to Jerusalem. They no, want it. No, never, yeah. never. The Palestinians want it because they believe that's their capital. No. The United Nations wants it because they don't like their lease on the banks of the East River in New York City. They want to move the United Nations headquarters to Jerusalem. After all, what more prestigious address can you have? The United Nations based in Jerusalem, headquarters in Jerusalem. They're not happy being in New York with US, U.S. taxpayers' dollars paying for their building. They, everybody wants to be in, not only have Jerusalem for themselves, but set up headquarters in Jerusalem. Yahweh yeah, says, go on vacation. Don't mess with it! Because I'm about to clean house. And I'm about to give it to the children of David. I'm about to give it to the returning sons and daughters of Yaakov. Yes. Ephraim and Yehuda are coming back. Oh, yes. And Yahweh says, now here's my weapon. He says, Israel may not use nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. Saddam Hussein may or may not have biological weapons mm -hmm. and anthrax. I can care less if he has anthrax because mm -hmm. in about a year, he's going to be a blot on the wall. <laughs> Crush. So I'm looking forward to that. So, you know why? Because any enemy of Yahweh is an enemy of mine. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He said, pray for those who use you, who despitefully use you and persecute you. He didn't say, share the land. If they want to dwell in our midst, you are to be at shalom with them. If they want to be with us, we are to be at shalom with them. But if they want to destroy us, we are not to be at shalom with them. Read the Torah and stop listening to Jennings and Fox News and MSNBC. Mm -hmm. Read the Torah. Yep. It says, whoever wants to dwell with you, if he's not an Israelite, how dare you mistreat him as a slave and a stranger? Because you were strangers in Egypt. Yes. That's right. Be kind, loving, caring, merciful. Yes. Blessed are the merciful, they'll obtain mercy to the people in your midst. But now when they want to destroy you, Yahweh said in Deuteronomy 7, he says, make no covenant with any of those nations that, I am kick that, that are being kicked out of the land. Hello? Mm -hmm. What did Yahweh say about the Oslo Accords? In Yeshayahu 28, he says, Your covenant with hell shall not stand, and your agreement with death shall be annulled. Yes. Now we knew how to make the peace process collapse. Yes. Because if we pursue this peace process, you'll find the Jews in the bottom of the Mediterranean. Yes. All the wisdom of men, that we, we rely on the wisdom of men, even the wisdom of the leaders of Israel, will result in death. But here's the good news. Yeshua is coming to claim his home. He's coming to claim his home. Oh, yeah. 
he's coming, he's coming home. Yeshua's coming home. And when Yeshua's coming home, he's bringing his homeboys with him. Turn to your neighbor and say, where are his homeboys? Give me some more water, please. Abraham, Abraham, please. Turn to your neighbor and say, you look like a homeboy. That's a compliment, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Yeshua's coming home, and all his homeboys are coming with him, the homegirls. Look at verse 12. But guess what? Yeshua's coming as Yahweh Ish Milchama. The one who came as a lamb is now coming as a lion to remove the squatters from the Palestinian occupied West Bank. Yahweh is going to destroy the squatters. That's what it says. But how? Yahweh even reveals to us in his word how he's going to do it. Yeah. He's going to get a hold of some of those weapons of mass destruction that are being stored up to destroy the state of Israel. Yeshua is going to take possession. Not only is he going to take possession of Yeshua Shalayim and the city of the great king, he doesn't want to destroy the weapons of mass destruction. Are you with me? He's going to use them. Yeah. Nuclear warfare. What a mean God. What a mean... Oh, he's actually going to give Jerusalem back to his son, the creator of heaven and earth. What a mean God. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Look at verse 12. Here's the plague. How many, how many, how many makot, plagues, did Egypt experience when the children of Israel were enslaved in Egypt? Huh? Ten. Because Yahweh had to set free his people. How many plagues is he going to use when he comes to restore Jerusalem and the tabernacle of David? He's not playing games. He doesn't go with ten, he goes with one. You hear me? Nuclear weapons, atomic weapons, biological weapons, they're all there for the master to use when he returns. You watching? And this is good news. You shouldn't because... He is the only, that's the only hands that those nuclear weapons